I am not going to take this guy off yet. But you come in here where those bolts are, that silver bolt there, take off the fuel line, and there's another matching bolt over here. And those right, take off the carburetor. I mean, in general, it looks pretty clean. You can look inside, and it looks looks amazingly clean. Part of me just wants to like maybe fire this thing back up before doing the carburetor. Now that I've changed out the spark plug. Hmm. Well, we have some leakage though. You can see it's a little shiny around that and that's part of my reason you know it's this water here it's not water it's gas and oil so I guess I need to do it not to clean it but to re-gasket it can tell me what these guys are here for it's just like extra cotter pins and stems and they stick through down to the bottom I guess if you lose one that's like your special place to go if you can get a second one I'm just realizing I've got a a model number and such in here. That's yeah, a real easy place to read it. <laughs> anyway, I want to show you this. If you see this right here, it's got a cotter pin in it, or it's got a, I don't know what those pins are called, it's got a pin in it. And it goes through into that contraption, which goes up this rod and shifts. This is the transmission. Uh, the gear shift at least and this is this direction is forward this direction is reverse and this right in the middle is neutral and as you can tell this got broken made out of like bakelite or some super old now if I could get something into here you can see there's a rod right here that's pretty strong I could get something that would go into that and get to that rod I'd have all the strength I need but right now, I'm doing something that's probably not going to work. I've ordered a clamp. I'm going to take this plastic off, ancient plastic, and I'm going to put this clamp that screws down on this. Then I'm going to have a little bar up here off of it that I can push back and forth. And I don't think it's going to work, but I'm going to try that first. And I've just been scared to pull all this uh, old plastic out, but it really is time. Is this impossible to change the gears or the direction at least until we come up with something and you know frankly this is awfully convoluted and and kind of forces a hard gear change no wonder it broke but that right there on the cheaper engines the five horsepowers the actual gear the forward reverse is right here and it's much more direct link to the actual engine so you know I might come back over here before it's over with and put something there all right in the process of getting this guy off this hose has taken a little bit of a beating specifically right there too much of a split for me to be comfortable. I think it actually probably could technically still be holding, but I'm gonna look for one on the on line and see if I can buy one. You guys, the bottom screw and the little big screw came out of the bottom hole where you fill it and the vent hole above it. Right now we're just letting it finish dripping. Slowly still coming up. I readjusted the position of the lower end and it spit out some more of this disgustingly old oil. So this definitely needed to work. Also give the give a little spin maybe. That doesn't matter. And down in there, see if we can cut a light on. Yeah, there it is. Down in there is the impeller and the water pump which I'm trying to decide if I want to take off or not 
Yeah, it is spitting water just fine. All right, well, I have set up a little bit of a rig over here. My camera rig consists of a magnet on a stick, a spring-loaded clamp, and a half-used container of Rain-X. You just have to use your imagination for the rest of that. Okay, you're not supposed to get carburetor cleaner on your hands. It's probably cancer causing. So let's try to avoid that at most levels. Go ahead and get my sealant out and loosen that up. Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, it's got a little brush in there. Go ahead and open a couple of these sealant bags up. Oh, they're already open. Cool. I know one of these goes on the outside up there. One of these goes on the piece that I haven't taken off yet, which I haven't decided if I'm going to redo or not. I'm not sure what that other one goes on yet. Yeah, it's like three in there, and I don't. Maybe it's for different types of engines. I guess. Now I have inside this little bag R69 some microscopic little pieces. In my view, I got big fingers, <laughs> and uh, this is called a duck valve, and it's flexible, and it blows up. You'll notice that the duck valve is on a 45. It's a little less than 45 in this case. It says to put it on a 45, so I will be putting that back probably at a 45, and but I will mentally note that this is not quite there. Also inside here is a flap and flap and uh, gasket with for this mounted uh, fuel inline, which I might take off before I take this guy off, so I get a little better grip on it. And then finally we have a little washer. A little solid disc, a spring disc. That solid disc, I think, goes inside of this guy, and the spring probably does too. And then I have a needle and a little microscopic spring right there under the needle. This thing's the needle. That's the filter, and there's the little disc, and there's two little tiny washers on top of the big red washer. So some of this I'm not going to know how to do anything with until I open the carburetor up. So it's really important that we, as we take this thing apart, we see how it's put together. thing I learned as a kid early on, if you're going to take it apart, you got to remember how to put it back together. All right, got to look for a Phillips head. This one might work. It's really small, though. Beyond the carburetor, I also brought this valve. It's got like a little ball bearing right there. You can see that the gas put the, the, the oop, I'm dripping already pushes the pushes that ball bearing in, and the oil the gas comes through this line into the other end of this. I decided to go ahead and get that clean too, just in case. The line past that, that on the tank and everything is actually new, so. I know everything past that will be good. Okay, these are two. Oh, just barely got a grab on it. I'm working on this screw here. Sorry if some of this is out of view. I'm going to get the other one started before I take it off so I can see how things are on the inside of that thing. Okay, I'm going to put my thumb there and hold that in place and take this last screw all the way out. This first screw I started with. Okay, I think that's out. This is um, the next thing. It'd be nice to have like a little spike. I don't have anything like that. I don't, really don't like using lead because that'll fall in there is you'll see that there is a flap here. 
And under that flap, I'll set that in the other side of my little container, is a gasket, which actually looks kind of surprisingly good. It's got a little rubber rub off on the back side. That's the gasket that came off this way. That's got a little guide, so we know how that goes on. Got a little point on one end, and the, so it's got this. Okay, so the guide, the memory guide here is you got a little spot here and a big spot here on that, so it gives us the push down that we want. Now, right here, I think is that screen. It's got some gunk in here. Screen's done its job. But before we go any further there, I am going to, you can see the, the valve works. And this is the choke. See the choke closing there? It chokes the engine. So that's working. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and take this screw off. Well, I bet this is, this is where a red washer goes. This is a drain. So in this winter, in matter of fact, anytime you're going to let it sit, you're supposed to drain all the car, the, the gas out of it, and then you turn it on and let it run until it's dry. This is a drain out of this bowl, bowl, what's called a bowl. Inside the bowl has a float, and mentally note that this is the front. This thing's turned this direction, this cut in here. The small side is right here, so I'm guessing the float will go this way, starting, so the hinge will be like right here, or it's been put on in the wrong spot. We're going to find that out in a second. Okay, there's our, it looks really clean. If, if this carburetor hadn't leaked a little, which could have been just the, the hose that I found a crack in, I'm not sure it needed work. I mean, it, it is clean as I'll get out. Look how clean that thing is. It's gorgeous. God, I hate taking everything off. Okay, this pin's coming out, and I'm going to let it come out. Set that down. There's a pin right there. Now, I, th I kind of expected a spring to be right in there. So I've got this spring thing that looks like that. I thought it was going to be in that piece there. If I pull this guy out, see I think it's missing the spring. Oh there is a little teeny spring on top of this. This is a different... that's kind of dirty. Or it's made black. Let's see. It might just be made black. Tell you what, I might be putting that back in. It's kind of hard to know how to fix something if it's not getting that one. It's shooting out my hose. Jesus, I need to work on your straw. This isn't very good. I don't think I've ever had a problem with the straw before. Goes working in there. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Looks like the uh, paint is coming off this type of anodized metal there, not the rest of it. Makes me want to spray it all just to get it all off because it looks like it's less than good in that situation. Now this is my rich and lean. I'm not pulling that. All right, let's get this hose off first. And um, you're not supposed to get 
the uh, carburetor cleaner on the white because it it pulled paint off and pulls it off in a gross way that then might get in your carburetor. So let's get this hose off. Okay, as hard as this is here, can you imagine trying to get that off? Your hands are stuck in an engine. Do want to take these little screws out? I'm not sure why that's so hard. Oh, I think it might have moved at that time. I didn't. <laughs> All right. I don't have anything with a handle on it down here. Not sharp enough to get into this. What if I do a side cut on it? Yeah, that's probably a better route. Surely I'm almost there. There we go. <coughs> Here's the bugger that was giving me such a hard time. Now, I ordered a 5 16th because the inside of this is about 5 16th. The outside's bigger than that, but I'm going to assume that the inside is what you measure because that's the, the nipples and nozzles that you're going on. So on this guy, there's a hole. I don't know if you can see, right there is a hole in this thing. Hopefully you can see it. And that's part of your idle. Now, let's see if that's enough to get this thing nice and straight. My wife had some homemade bread and she's probably wondering what happened to her bread tie. I have been quiet on the matter. Let's actually work in a couple of these. Make sure they're clean. All right, let's try our... So I'm just going to stick it into that little hole. Get a little closer and hope it works for you guys. And it this feels really clean, so I don't feel any gunk or anything in there. Let's see. I think I put a bigger bin in it, dumbass. Okay, that's a little better. All right, let's get this guy out of here. We're able to get him clean. This guy is pretty clean except for what's gotten on after post cleaning. Got one little piece of trash on him. All right, what else do we need to do? We sprayed most of the holes. Got a little bit of paint in there. Damn it. It's really annoying. Get it out. least on that side. Well, we haven't gotten this filter out. This really want to get that filter out. That yeah, filter. Let me spray it on this side for a second. Ugh. Got myself in the face. Yeah, it is very fragile. Let's see if we can I just peeled it up by accident. Let's see if I can get it out with this. 
There we go. That's the filter. Got it out. There's no, there's no little diaphragm behind it. Then. I don't know what the diaphragm's for. I'd like to get that off too. There we go. There's a pin. I, you know what? I could take. What's that by me? All right. Well, I went and got the manual. This is a 1972 manual of the outboard we're working on. Pretty cool to have that. It's called a Sears 7.5 horsepower. It's a called a, a Ted Williams, who was a baseball player with the Red Sox, who was famous back in the 60s, 70s, I guess. Um, anyway, uh, I found the uh, little metal disc where that goes. I found spring i know that there's a, also a little uh, gasket on the the dripper here which could be one reason i had a leak there's also it looks like a little teeny ring here on 29 that goes in that little hole right there which might be our other ring and i also noticed that the pin the needle and the spring are like the one i took out not the one we have gotten to replace it with uh so we're not going to replace those we're going to um put back in what was here so one thing I want to do is also spray that because I didn't spray it the first time planning to replace it but it has a little black tip and I don't I think it might be made that way but let's we'll just give it a quick run over everybody gets a little cleaning yeah I think it's just that color see it's got a little spring at the top a little black tip we're going to go back to that guy. And of course, my case fell apart. And now I got to figure out which one's the new one of these two. <laughs> All the old fell into my new. Ugh. I'm not good at this. Now, that one's a little wider than this one, but let's hope that's because of use. And this dirty washer will go back over here. So, what we're left with is. This little washer, I don't know where it goes yet. And I thought it went down in the main section in here. And there isn't a washer in there. I would just, it was just a shadow I saw. So that makes sense. It doesn't go in there. And we have also this little washer. I don't know where it goes. So we're going to keep exploring on... The two things. This is called a Welch. What is that? A Welch tin. It's called a Welch plug. That is a Welch plug. And it's where this pin goes. That's one reason we haven't been able to wash it out. I have no idea how you get to it. Let's see if there's no access there. Do you tap it? How to get a Welch plug out. And this plug doesn't look the same. I'm guessing there's a diaphragm inside that thing. Let's look at this one first. So this guy, if we turn him all the way out, he stops. I'm not sure how you continue to take him out. I guess if I took these screws off, it's hard to tighten right now. Let's get a good shot of the throttle connection. So it goes top in under to this metal piece. Just in case that falls out. All right, so now this is loose. This fights me a little bit. Partly this spring here is pulling this thing straight. You know, that really didn't get any easier. Let's see, there's a little bit of a... Oh, there's a nut on there. I had an Allen wrench. Good God, I don't want to take all that apart. Let's see if I... 
keep turning. Oh, an Allen wrench just to keep that from continuing to come unhooked. Oh, that's scary. Now I've got to remember where it was. But it is out at this point. It's got a little needle. And let's give that a shot. Make sure that's nice and straight going in. That's going to fight me the whole way down. I'm going to have to shove something in there to hold that back. Okay. Let's go get some needle nose. stronger than it looks. Can we get that Welsh valve out with? I wonder if I need to look that up. Welch valve. I'll tell you what, well, first I'm gonna Alright, well, I have found out how to get the Welch plug Welsh plug out. Welch plug. Welch, Welch, like Welch's grape. Mmm. If I get some of this gunk off, I'm gonna like a razor blade on this old gasket on this guy. It's dirty. Let's do that before I quit. I want to scratch the metal though. Get some of this. Let's turn this guy like that. Give me some more hand rants. This dirty piece of aluminum. It's a lot thicker than that piece of aluminum. Oh, this is scary. Gotta have faith in the process. I'm almost through, I think. I've been carving out little sections of aluminum as I go. Scared to push too hard on it though. It's also kind of hard to get torque at this height. <sighs> okay, got through it. We went sideways on it and see if that helps. God. There it goes. Okay. There you go. That's what came out. Now they, they made them a lot thicker back then. Still not comfortable that I did that. <sighs> but it is kind of dirty. Absolutely nothing. Oh well. Well, let's hope we were led down the right path on that. Yeah. 
Now that shoots out of this guy, so let's see what... Now I'm all wet, I can't get it back off. There we go. Let's see what happens if we shoot this time again. Yeah. Okay. Now, was that worth it? Who knows? Might not ever work again. Okay, there's that little hole in the side. Got some stuff to go through it this time. It's a weird cut. We're going to hammer that in next. We're going to get that Welsh flow back in. I don't still don't see a any kind of control for this screw, tap screw of whatever needle. What's that called? It's called a 24 is a screw assembly idle adjustment. Hmm. Idle's never gonna work again. <laughs> Never gonna work again. All right, so to um, put this Welch plug back in, take the bulb, the dome part, slide it in, and then we hit it with a tap like this. This tap is really small at that end. That was a lot of a lot of work for just a little bit of activity there. Yeah, this seems to work. So I'm gonna. throttle and assembly. Let's tighten it on that instead of what we're working on. And I don't want to don't want anything to hit that throttle assembly. That's pretty tight. Let's see if that'll work. I'm gonna give a few whacks with the skinny end. Do some more with this end. Well, I think it's back in. Not as pretty as it was. And we pushed out our washer, so I think I'm gonna put a little seal on that before that goes back on. I'm gonna use this one. Come back over here. I think my little gaff tool here is pretty good. Probably the most control I've had over a camera in a while. And this is the wrong screwdriver. I thought that was it. I think it's upstairs. I think if we push this spring down, this track, all the, no, that is the same one. And this little, this is gonna be a pain in the ass to get back on now. I'm not looking forward to getting this back on. But I do have a leak, so this seems like a good thing to do. They give you the parts, but they don't tell you how to do anything. It's all a guess. Too, screwdriver too big to get in there. Nice sturdy nail. Those are too big. Try the screw. Oh, what's that thing? Maybe even better. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Let's do that. Old piece of that's probably an old spring for some kind of mower. This guy owned this house 20 years ago. 
Yeah, it's too big. Was a small engine repair guy in his retirement. So he left a lot of little screws and bolts that I decided to keep. All right, I'm having some success. Whew. Just need the right tool. Let's go back to our trusty drywall screw. Problem is, the, the top of the spring is right up at a section that I can't quite get under it. And that has to be done to get this thing to come off. Ugh. How about that razor blade? Oh yeah, but it, get, it gets wide too fast. The razor blade goes under it, but it's too wide. Ugh. What to do, what to do? I wonder why mechanics come home angry every night. <laughs> would be skinny like this strong enough but also not as wide I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna put it down here and see if I can't get this action going <sighs> come on not cutting my finger oh wait 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 I think I'm really close get off come off Come off. Does this also have to go down to come off? I got the spring down, but I can't get the little. I wonder if it has a, a lip. It has to go just a little further down. Oh, wait. The spring is still up on the back side. Well, what the heck? How's this supposed to work? Probably a tool that does this, maybe. I looked at the washer and it does look super flat, like it could be useful to get it off. Or if I could get another. Huh. Tell you what, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go get a pair of special pliers. There, there we go. You can see that it's almost off. There, oh, it's off. Hope I didn't damage it. Okay, we're gonna let that spring go slowly, and our thing fell through. And we can see that this does have a washer on the back side. Question is which washer goes in its place? And <laughs> was any were any of these washers designed for it? Because they don't tell you what they're sending the washer for. I'm gonna guess that, that round one that's a little smaller can go in its place. It's always scary to take a washer off that doesn't match. Because I'm afraid it's going to disintegrate. So if I can be really careful, where's my razor blade? It's also loose. Yeah, that's not the right. I'm going to leave this washer on because I don't seem to have a proper replacement. Let's hope the best. A little bit of cleaner to get the crap off of it. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it down because I don't want to rot that gasket. Go 
glove shot. All right, we're out of gloves. Part of me wants to pull that washer and flip it. But I'm definitely going to damage it taking it off because this thing's got like an extra piece up here. And this washer is pretty tight on that. So if it's lost any of its flex, I'm going to destroy it taking it off. Ugh, I just poured that all in my hand. It's going to be ugly. This bowl is perfectly clean for all the spraying we did. All right. It's going back on. It's also not perfectly straight. I kind of want to hammer it, but I'm not going to. Okay. This goes this way. Okay. So now we put the spring back on. This is the side that got choppy, chopped a little bit. The question is, how do you... I wonder if I use these now. I could get this stuff in the back there holding it. Woo! It's a bar puzzle. I'll tell you that pushing the spring uh, wrenches that work backwards. That's with your mind. You know what's going to happen. This little fragile thing I'm doing. It's going to shoot that spring across the ceiling. I'm going to spend two hours finding it. Somewhere in this garage. This basement. Oh! There it went. They see in two hours. Well, I'm happy to share that I found the spring in about ten minutes. Kept my eye. Uh, uh, had the... Uh, Karma of the Gods working in my favor, which is awesome. And got it back on in about five. It's a little easier to put on than take off. Um, I've also reinstalled and went and measured from my old tapes how far this was screwed in. Got it screwed back in, getting past the stopper and reconnected the throttle or the choke, that is. And that's working well. Um, I hope. <laughs> and now I'm about to put this uh, fuel inline thing back, back on. And you got to line up these uh, spacers. And the gasket goes on first. And I'm telling you, this thing fits ever so slightly weird. It, Holes line up. The top's a little, maybe a little off. This one's just a little. Big right there. It's hitting these holes just wrong. It's like it's being pushed down right here and over a little bit right here. So if it was just like that, it would be good. So if I can bend it out a little bit. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Eh. I don't like the way that edge is showing there. Not sure what I can do about it. I guess I could um, bend this piece as well. Just a little bit.
Yeah, it's a little better. All right, well, we're going to go with that. And then this piece goes over it like so. Got this little flapper that goes on top. And this guy just goes back down on top of it all. Make sure I can try to remember what direction I think. Yeah. Pretty sure that came out in the front. And there's the other one. Thing seems to still be in place. We know we have this little flat Phillips head down here now. And it's too small. <laughs> what good are you for? She's this little flathead. Okay, one last check. Everything looks like it's in place. I'm not putting gasket sealer on here because there wasn't any on here when we took it apart. And because it has that little flap thing. What's that called? Uh, 26. Valve flap. And 20 is a gasket, just says gasket. So we just put on a gasket and a valve flap. Which is a little crazy because that valve flap did not actually close the holes in any full way. Just kind of obstructed them a little bit. Very nuanced, these things. Carburetors in general are just insane. Just a little more turn on those. Wasn't much on them when I the old went back on. off. With its spring already loaded, it looks just like the picture on the illustration. So that's going to be good enough for me. This goes on the inside. The float goes on the inside of the cast part of the carb. Oh, I got around to saying that <laughs> out loud. <laughs> All right, this thing just sits in there kind of loosely and doesn't really. I wouldn't call that a good fit because it like comes over the line where that bowl gasket sits. I'm going to put some seal on this. I hope that's not a bad idea. And if you remember earlier when I was talking about this thing fitting, it looks it looks about like the it did when we took it off. It's got the hinge here, and that this goes this lower end goes where the hinge is right here. You just got to make sure you get that right. All right, I think I'm going to put the uh, duct valve in before I seal that up, though. This seems to be symmetric. A little piece of trash right there. I like corrosion. I think it matters, but... These are a little... This thing does not sit in there. Okay, we're going 45. It's a little more biased that way last time. And I'm, to be honest, I'm not quite 45 either. All right, now we need to get a little gasket glue. Seal this puppy up. Don't get it on my fingers. I don't know how else to do that. So you put it down like that. <laughs> I 
I've done so many gaskets in my life, so it's really stringy. I'm gonna push that in. I think I should put it on the other side first, but so be it. Ugh, that stringiness is unnerving because it's gonna go inside the carb if I don't watch it. Alright, I've got it all over my fingers now. Don't do as I do, kids. Okay, my low end is going right over that. All right. Oh. <laughs> I was literally about to say we didn't get any gasket cleaner on the outside. And then I did that. So. Is that sitting? I don't know what I'm doing, guys. Shouldn't have done it this way. Okay, I'm coming out. I have to do all sorts of cleaning now. God dang it, this was a bad idea. God. Hey, don't do this. Don't do this. So now I gotta clean all this again. Use my hand. Damn it, Andy. You can't do it that way. You gotta get it on before you put the float back on. Damn it. Okay. Alright, I think we have enough cleaning on there now. Okay, I'm gonna grab this like that. Get my rod back out. Use this little mat because it collects things, but it also collects things. I'm not sure why that rod needs to be loose like that, but. All right, we're back in. All right, that looks good. We got just a little bit of fluid right there. Oh my God, that stuff melted my valve. Son of a bitch, did right. Let's get it hand tight. Oh yeah, that's hand tight. I'm gonna go. Guy seemed to put a little work on it, but I'm known for putting too much tight on things, so I'm gonna stop right there. All right, well, we have Bloody Mary now. Look at this thing, it just <laughs> it looks a little beat up with all the pink all over it. What's the chance that this is gonna work? <laughs> all right, let's see, everything's still. Turning on there, yep. Got our throttles working. So now we have to put a gasket here and put our duct valve in. We're gonna put the old one back in. Luckily, it didn't go into the stuff. This would be a great video for people to learn what not to do. Of course, you're only gonna see it if it actually starts. So a little bias to the north on that. Let's see about right there. Go with that. Not quite right either. There we go. That last push. I think that nailed it. All right. That's a little booger there. Well, let's look through our stuff real quick. Oh, wait a second. Here is a nice, lovely little. <laughs> Oh, God. We forgot to put our screen on. Here's our screen. Let's go back. All right, you remember this lovely guy with the gaskets and such? You really got to put the screen back in before you close it all up, or you have to start over, so. 
Now we're going to put the screen in. There we go. Got a screen in there now. Now we put this guy back in. Like a so. I want this to go this way a little bit. I still give this so much on them anyway. They have a really tiny screw head on them. Yeah, that's pretty much all you can do anyway. All right, we are back in business. That's going to go out. Got our this. We got extra parts. We got old parts. We got melted duck valves. Look at that. Even got a hole in it. It's worthless at this point. All right. We're getting our gas line, fuel line, got a bunch because Amazon makes you buy enough for 20 installs. Got some little screw clamps that we're putting on and we're going to put this guy like a so. You always point this part away from the carburetor. Flow's going that way, but this one doesn't have an arrow on it. So, I just confirmed again online, it will be going that way. I'm going to screw this one down, and then I'm going to cut the line, figure out how to fit this guy into this space, then run the line back to that little line right there. Because this has not had a filter in the past, and it's not a very big filter, but there's not a ton of room here, so and I don't want to get it too close to that heat sink right there so we'll be fiddling with that for a little bit I'll come back when it's done because then we're gonna start it all right well I have connected the fuel filter coming up from the gas line so it'll go through that nozzle it comes from that can going through this guy up through that nozzle oh, that nozzle through the line through the filter around the filter and through into the carburetor right there and it seems like a jinx move to lower this cowling part of the front cowling and bolting that back on and putting the knobs back on the the choke and the fuel feed um, but if I don't I can't really adjust this guy it's hard to move without the the knob on it so, and I don't want this dropping. This thing, this white paint is super scratchy. Just a couple taps and it's just really peeled off. By the way, for those that didn't see it, this is my new shifter. Looks like a little steampunk maybe, but just used some parts that we had in the house. That's neutral, that's reverse, and that's forward. Or actually, I think that's reverse. This is forward. This is neutral. This is reverse. Okay, we'll learn that once the thing's back in place. You can tell it's in forward because the only time that this shifter will go into fast and it'll turn, you can see this thing turning, is when it's in forward. All right, let's uh, make sure we don't have any rubs over here. So we do have the hose up against that line. It's not touching. Come on, baby. 